Welcome to Rough Riders, I'm Jay Taylor. This week we're staying at Grant Village Campground in Yellowstone National Park, and we're gonna cover what you need to know before you go, so stick around. Grant Village Campground has a total of 438 sites spread out across 12 loops. Now one of these loops is dedicated to uh, group camping only and it is a tent only setup in, in, in the group campsite. The rest of the loops are for individual reservations and of the, those there's three loops that are labeled as tent only sites. That's loop D, loop K, and loop J. However, I did see some RVs and stuff in the Loop J, so I don't know how uh, rigid uh, the tent only designation is. Now, most of the campsites here are, are set up as pull through sites, as indicated by the semicircles, or parallel. There are some back end sites, you can see, like back here at the end of Loop I, uh, as well as in some of the Loop E stuff. There are some back end sites, but um, you know, most of them are sort of pull through. And we'll show you what those look like here in just a minute. There are restrooms uh, scattered throughout each loop, so you'll find at least one restroom in, in each loop. Uh, some have uh, two. So uh, there is plenty of, of, of restrooms that are generally a short walk, uh, but you know if you're in an RV, then obviously you, you probably don't need to worry about any of that. Um, some of these uh, sites do have an absolutely stunning view of the lake. Uh, what I did find is we're over here in loop I in spot 328. Um, and as I was walking through the park, I did see like in uh, sites 300, 301 uh, to 309, these sites along here had absolutely amazing views of the lake. So if you do get a shot at picking your spot, um, those would be some of the best spots in my opinion to uh, try and get into. Grant Village is about 40 minutes from the south entrance of Yellowstone National Park. It sits on Yellowstone Lake and is an hour or less drive from most of the major attractions you might want to visit. I've included some videos along with mileage and estimated drive times for your reference. Okay, so the proximity of the sites, uh, you can see our site here on the left, and then as I pan to the right, here's the next site, so they are kind of close together. Plenty of trees, but not a ton of privacy between sites. And then you can see uh, our two sites are sharing one bear box. So here's one of the larger pull through sites. And typical with any of the campsites here, you only get, the only amenities you get on site is a picnic table and a fire ring with a uh, barbecue grate on it. There are no services, there are no water, there's no electricity or anything like that. There are plenty of trees though. Uh, to give you good coverage and shade during the day. There's generally a spot for one, maybe two tents. But again, this is one of the larger sites for one of the larger RVs. And then here's an example of a longer back end site towards the end of the loop here. Again, no services, just a picnic table and a grill. Here's my daughter's site there on the right and the site right next to her which is a back end, very small. And you see they don't actually have a bear box at all. Okay, so here's a bear box at our site. Uh, this is meant to be split between our site and the site next to us. Since there's nobody next to us and my daughter doesn't have a bear box at her site, we've got her stuff as well as our stuff in here. And so you can see it's a fairly sizable box. We've got two large ice chests. We've got ours 55 quart and uh, my daughter's uh, almost the same size. Then we've got a smaller ice chest with drinks there in the back and two uh, boxes of dry goods. So it's a pretty sizable box, uh, certainly bigger than the one at the end of the loop. But um, you know you're still you know confined on space. So you know depending on how long your your camping trip is up here, you know plan accordingly because you might need to keep some stuff in your car. So this is one of the smaller bear boxes here at the end of the loop, uh, meant to be shared by a couple of campsites. Here's another example of a couple sites uh, together. And you can see we've got two sites there and then we've got a third site right there and they're all sharing that common bear box. So 
So this is one of the common areas. This is where the water is that you can refill your tanks and all that kind of stuff. You've got your restrooms. You've got a dishwashing station right there in that center door. And then the uh, common trash bin. Basic restroom here. There is no hot water or anything like that on the facilities, no showers or anything like that. So it's a pretty basic restroom uh, for serving the entire campground. Just off the main road, before you enter the campground, there is coin-operated laundry and showers, as well as an ice machine should you need it after hours. The campground is located right on the edge of the lake, and some of the sites do actually have a partial view of the lake, but not all of them. But you can see it's an absolutely beautiful view of the surrounding area from the lake's edge. There is a day-use picnic area with some picnic tables scattered around uh, with fire rings and grates. There's a restroom over there in a very large parking lot. So here is the registration building. They also sell you firewood here if you need firewood. They don't allow you to bring in your own firewood so you do need to purchase it on site. And then it has a large parking lot as well to accommodate all the visitors checking in. If you're bringing a boat, they do have a launch ramp here at the campground, uh, but you will need to go through a boat inspection first. So it's uh, typical making sure you got the right you know, safety equipment and you know, go through the rules and regulations of the lake. But more importantly, what they're looking for is invasive species. So uh, they will do a detailed inspection of your boat to make sure that there's no uh, you know, mussels or clams or anything like that attached to the side of your, your boat that could uh, damage the local fish population. So do be prepared for that. And uh, once your boat passes inspection, they will give you a permit so that you can head out onto the lakes. There is a visitor center here at the, at the campground as well where you can learn about the history of the park as well as the wildlife in the area and all sorts of other things like that. It is closed right now due to COVID-19 though and will reopen once they get the all clear. Also near the uh, uh, campground entrance there's a large amphitheater where they do a lot of uh, educational training and things like that. They also do hold church services here as well with uh, some of the local uh, church, church organizations. There is a general store in the area, so if you need to restock on supplies and ice and groceries and things like that, you can get that here. There's also a little grill in there, so if you don't feel like fixing dinner, come on down to the store and have them fix it for you. Across from the general store, there is a gas station and a auto repair shop, as well as a little uh, mini convenience store as well where you can get some supplies if the general store isn't open. There is a dump station at the ground so that you can uh, dump all your wastewater and black water or gray water if you've got an RV. They've also got a uh, drinking water hose so you can refill your freshwater tanks if you need to. Okay, some final thoughts on the Grant Village Campground. Overall, great place to stay. It's close to a lot of the uh, sites and attractions that you might want to go see. Uh, you know, the worst case scenario is if you're going all the way up to the Mammoth Hot Springs, it's about a two hour drive. If you're going over to the uh, uh, Grand Canyon of Yellowstone, it's about you know, right, right about an hour drive. So you know everything's relatively close to Grant, Grant Village. Um, so it's a it's a great place to stay. You know if you want to see a lot of the attractions in the southern part of Yellowstone Park. Uh, but be aware. For one is the weather is unpredictable, much like what we're having right now. And I apologize for that. We've got a lot. We've got a storm blowing through. We just got back yesterday, and so I got a lot of thunder and lightning going on. But the weather in Yellowstone is unpredictable. The first two days we were there, it was really, really cold. And this is uh, the end of June, beginning of July. Uh, we had snow on the first day that we got there. Uh, and then it was freezing rain uh, at night, um, then overcast and, and raining and hailing and stuff as we were out seeing some of the sights. But then on the other two days, it was gorgeous. It was like mid 70s, sunny and, and beautiful weather. Uh, so you, you kind of need to you, you need to be prepared for unpredictable weather while you're there. Um, as far as the campground goes, uh, it does feel like the campground was designed more around tent camping and small trailers and things like that. This is an old campground. I, I mean, my parents brought me there when I was just a really little kid. And I'm an old guy now, uh, so um, it does feel like it was designed around some of these smaller things. So modern RVs may not fit in some of the spaces in the best optimal conditions, right? So you got slide outs and things like that. It might be a little tight, might be a little packed. 
some of the turns, some of those uh, pull-through sites, uh, they've got a pretty steep uh, curve to them. So it may not be easy to get your RV in and out of there easily. Uh, you know, we saw a number of people have struggling to get their, their RVs parked properly in their site. One guy actually took out a stop sign while we were there. So, um, you know, so do be aware of that. The fact that you're not getting any sort of uh, power or water or sewage hookups, you know, you do need to be aware of that. You're basically boondocking while you're there. Um, there is water at the common uh, station right by the bathrooms. If you need to refill, there's also a, by the dump station, there's a place to, you know, for your RV to fill up your freshwater tank. So you do have those options available, but uh, there's nothing at the site. So, or at each individual, individual campsite. Uh, as far as um, pets and things like that, it's probably best to leave your pets at home because you are in bear country, you are in wildlife country, you will have likely wildlife walk through your campsite. While we were there, we had a wolf walk through our campsite, we had a coyote walk through our campsite, we also had an elk walk through our campsite. Um, and so, uh, you know, you are in, in wildlife country. So likewise, if you've got camping with small kids, be mindful, be aware of what's going on around you because, uh, you know, your pets and, and, and small kids could, could look like a, an easy, easy prey for, for some, of the, some of the wildlife. So just be aware. I, don't, I wouldn't anticipate any problems, but it's just something to be mindful of. Um, the, uh, the bathrooms and stuff don't have hot water, so you know, if it's cold out uh, in unpredictable weather and stuff like that, you know, it, when you go to wash your hands, it's gonna be cold. Uh, if you wanna take a shower, you need to go up to the coin-operated showers. They were closed while we were there, so I would say check before you go to make sure they're open because they were closed due to COVID-19 for us. Uh, so we had to do you know, sponge baths and stuff like that in order to get you know, clean every day. So uh, that's another thing to be aware of. But uh, overall, it's a, it's a great campsite. So we really enjoyed our stay. I would encourage you, Yellowstone is one of those must-see places that should be on everybody's bucket list uh, because it's absolutely stunning uh, with all the attractions. The Grant Village is, is located on, on the southern part of uh, Yellowstone. And, uh, you know, if you want to do dispersed camping, back camping, there's plenty of opportunity for all that stuff. It's just not at, at, at Grand Village. So anyway, there you go. There's my final thoughts on the campground. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, please give it a thumbs up if you did and consider subscribing because your interaction with, with the content, your comments and your, your, your thumbs up and everything uh, do help guys like myself out quite a bit and allow us to bring you more, more rich and, and developed content. So uh, thanks for watching this video and we'll see you next time.